Like a lot of things happen around here, it started off as really quite a good idea. You'll never guess where this is going. What we wanted was a luxury RV camper van style vehicle with the added ability to transport a car in it. What we ended up with is this. A 1985 Ford Cargo 7.5 ton X library bus in a spectacular shade of yellow. All right, it's not spectacular, it's hideous. It's hideous, old, and fantastically slow and ponderous. But it is road legal, and it's our side project to be worked on while the kettle is boiling and when we're waiting on parts for the Mini. The plan is to turn this monster into a transporter and home away from home RV type vehicle to use for Binky, the rally car, and any of our other cars. It'll be nice to just rock up somewhere, pitch the truck, and make a brew without worrying about hotel costs and transport back and forth to the venues. When all is said and done, we hope to be in this for less than the cost of a half-decent covered trailer, not to mention a capable tow vehicle. Plus, you know, party bus. Now we've got expensive tastes. For example, this horse box advertised recently is more than £65,000, but we have little or no budget, so we've got to make the best of what we have. So to start off, we need to find out our unladen weight to get a baseline for how much kit we can throw at it. Time for a road trip. Now we're hoping our unladen weight will be around four and a half tons. That'll give us something to play with. 5,720 kilos. That's far from ideal. So we've got to make some pretty big weight savings right off the bat. Starting with removing all the crap that the previous owner left in it. That's much better. So that was probably the only easy bit of the process. The majority of the weight reduction is going to come from underneath. So that's where we're going next. Mm. Yeah, I've got some other things to do, and there's really only room for one under there, mate. Keep over. <sighs> Why this truck, you ask? Well, apart from being just two and a half grand, it has a valid MOT, and for a 34-year-old cargo, the chassis is in remarkably good condition. Plus, it had the added attraction of being registered as a Class 4 private heavy goods vehicle, which means we can both drive it on our current licenses, and we don't need to suffer the bureaucratic nightmare that a normal HGV entails. We're going to start the weight loss program by removing all the superfluous heavy stuff from underneath, like this spare wheel bracket, the massive rear bumper, and the huge hydraulic stabilizing legs. First job is to clean up and spray the bolts with some penetrant. Then I'm going to remove the hydraulic pump and its associated lines. Oh, it's not 9 sixteenths. I never 9 sixteenths, 17 mil. How are those? It's half inch. Yes. Oh, and that was no XCP. Shut the front door. It no longer swivels. <laughs> swivels gone. <laughs> She's loose, but she won't swivel. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Look at that! I think we have lift off now. Yes! All right. Let's see, P is the bollocks. Right. 
Well, that is the pump free of the malarkey. Three, four. Next, the hydraulic lines come off the legs. So we also bit a ratchet open end. That'd be awesome. Hallelujah. Oh. There we go. might already be thinking this is going to be a ludicrous amount of work for what's essentially a box on wheels. But a half decent used covered trailer on its own is around 15 grand. And that doesn't come with a bed, a toilet or a bar with optics. Well now I've got all the clutter out of the way, we can move on to the heavy stuff. Let's get some bolts undone. Oh, you complete and utter toss pot. See, that sure could be a lot easier with somebody else helping me. The spare wheel holder now removed, it's time to have a go at the stabilising legs. Anyone who's worked on rusty old trucks will know how much of a pain in the ass some of the large bolts can be. This one is being particularly recalcitrant. I'm going to go in and put some more lube on it. No, I can't quite. Do you need the long one? Because I can probably get away with the short one. Look, try that. You sure? Yeah. I was saying, I'm going to go in and put some lube and come out. It's not that. It's the. Uh, it's right up against the channel. Okay. Oh, you sure? Nope. I'm just gonna uh, just do it. <laughs> well, can you wedge it up against something? Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm probably wedge my hand between something, isn't it? Right. I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna try and go out. So it's, okay. it's gonna go back towards the front of the cab, right? Yep. Right. Right, ah, yeah. Right, right. Just twisting off We eventually managed to wedge a socket on it properly no. and combined with a big bar, no. sheared the bolt clean off. Let's start with the middle one. Right. Which I can just about get on. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Bottom. Bottom. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Feeling that's two foot bar. 
Can we have a look at the top one? Or? Yeah, that's good. See when you're ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Your turn. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Sounds like the hinge on your wallet. Haven't <laughs> put the lid on that for ages. That's not. Wind it up, wind it up. Wind it up. Do it, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. The plan here is to support the legs on our new 5 tonne jack, remove the bolts and then gently and carefully let the jack down with the whole assembly balanced on it. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That just came out nicely. With the legs off, we moved on to the rear bumper. That got her. You reckon? No. No. Oh, she's cracked. Oh, she's just sheared. Work, fella. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sorry, I got a spare eye. <laughs> That's in my raccoon wounds. Oh, oh. You're in the firing line there, dude. Can you hear that? <laughs> that's, the, that's the bolt laughing at you, dude. <laughs> Thrash away. Right, all right. Bolt there. Oh, yes. Use a twatting your end. Oh, 
now that the bulk of the underside steelwork is gone, we moved on to the miles of associated cabling. Oh, Bruce, you star. I think it's probably best if we fast forward through the boring bits. At this point, it's hard to appreciate just how much cabling and heavy wire is in this truck. Okay. That's not too bad. Right. These two, I'm going to get rid of that one. Because that is switch feed. And let's go forward to the cab. I suppose we may as well go all the way to the cab with these, wouldn't we? All right. Uh, and these, well that's disconnected, where does this go to? Are these just cable tied up there, aren't mm -hmm. they? So there's some judicious use of... Or dikes as the Yanks like to call them. Yeah, terrific. <laughs> cool <laughs> lots of <laughs> bellies. <laughs> Fifty quid's worth of copper in that. Don't know what that is. Right, and there's off. We're gonna go forward with those. There must be ten kilos of wiring just for this thing. Time to do before we go anywhere. These wires are to the switches in the cab that actuate the hydraulic legs, and now they're all loose, I can pull them through. It's a waste of tie ups, though. While we were fertling around in the cab, we found the cargo's air conditioning system. All that wiring terminated in this fuse box. It's redundant now, so let's whip it all out. Done. So now we've got rid of all the superfluous scrap from underneath the back of the vehicle, it's time to turn our attention to the diesel powered heater, heater. Thing. system. It's 8 kilowatts. It's a fair thing. <laughs> 
The heater works by pumping diesel from the truck's fuel tank into a large cylindrical burner, then blowing the hot air through a series of large convoluted pipes up into the body out of these black metal vents. It's simple, but it's old and defunct, so it's going. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, that's nice. Look at that. I suppose it can't really rust into wood, can it? Well, it's not a mini. You can point. Well. Some sort of hat is in order. Yeah, are you going to pull? Yeah. That's it. With all the ducting now gone, the heater's wiring needs to come out too. And there's a lot of it. An awful lot of it. Now it's just the heater itself to remove. Right. Okay, that's, yeah. that's good. Oh, she's weighty. That's good. Thanks for your help. Ah. Welcome. Can I call you an ambulance? So I think it might just come up. Is it coming out? I'm not sure yet. Hold on. I don't want to presume. Pull it out. I'm going to try and rip that nut off. That's loose, man. We still haven't got nearly enough tools out. Well, that was off. So. How heavy this thing is? Heavy, fine. Christ. Want a hand? No, I'm good, I think. Oh. That's good. Well, that for now is it underneath, thankfully. Time to move on to the interior. The truck was most recently used as a transporter for a drag racing car. Unfortunately for us, the drag car was narrow, and the barn doors put in to accommodate it are nowhere near wide enough for us to use with any of our cars, so they've got to come out. Plus, the alley frame holding them up covers some of the fasteners in the rear cabinet, so we can't remove those until the frame is out. It never rains. The 
frame had silicon bathroom sealant all the way around it, so some serious pry bar action took us to this point, ready to pull it out. Now we really can start gutting the inside of our old truck. With all of the shelving and the rear cabinets out, it's time to tackle the rest of the hand-built interior fixtures. This bit is also boring, so let's fast forward this too.
We don't know who built the body in the fixtures way back when I were a lad, but whoever did, did a fantastic job. It is, as they say, skookum as frig, and no expense was spared. Most of the wood wasn't chipboard, but hardwood. It was designed and fitted out beautifully. Our only complaint is that every single screw was slot-headed and an absolute pain to gun out with the impact driver. But it stood the test of time, and sadly now, it's all scrap. Before we took the power tools to these pneumatic doors, they worked perfectly. Watch. But they are surplus to requirements now, so unfortunately they're going on the scrap pile, which is getting larger by the minute. Nearly there now, just this bloody awful bile green carpet to come up. Heaven knows what vile grime and dirt has been ingrained in this over the past three decades. It's probably best to burn it, just to be safe. In a safe and responsible manner, obviously. Not just chuck it on a bonfire or something. We wouldn't do that. Promise. That was no joke. <laughs> the final thing to come out is the mat. And with that disposed of, we can go to the Weybridge to find out the new weight. Remember, it was 5,720 kilos before, and we're looking for under 4.5 tonnes if possible. That's not going to do it. Hmm. Decisions need to be made. What he really means is, shit's about to get a lot more overcomplicated. <laughs>